Welcome back to Hero Power. This is episode 62, and I am your host, Avantes. And as always, I am joined by my co-hosts, Zoroshio. You broke me. <laughs> it happens from time to time. And Versika. <laughs> you got me too. I have tears coming out of my eyes. It's not often that you mess up, so it's nice to see that you're it's, you're actually human. The perils of doing live video streaming, you know? I mean, something's <laughs> bound to break eventually. Which it's usually us. So those of you watching you. on YouTube <laughs> and those of you listening to the audio will have no idea what happened. And I'm good with that. <laughs> but those of you in our live chat tonight, congratulations, you got to see it. <laughs> it always pays to be in our live chat. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So, oh, goodness. with that said, uh, we've got a good bit <laughs> to talk about tonight. We have a giveaway to do tonight. I'm really excited about. That's we right, are our first one. doing our first giveaway of 2017 for our patrons. So, Ooh. stay tuned. That's happening towards the end of the audio section of tonight's show. All right. Before we jump into all that, though. Hey, Zoroshio, why don't you tell us a little bit about Viforce? I'm going to tell you about Viforce this week. And the reason I'm going to tell you about Viforce is because I have, uh, have a wonderful wife that has agreed to uh, allow us to get a new Viforce computer for DreamHack. So I will have a nice, fresh, competitive game, gaming computer going in a DreamHack. However, to do so... I have also had to agree to a, uh, a spring payment of getting her a Viforce computer. So not only am I getting one, but I'm getting two Viforce computers. Well, me, I have to plan everything out. So I went ahead and contacted the guys over at Viforce, and they were very, very, very helpful. Um, and I'll tell you more about that on the second half of the show. Sweet. All right. So... So now both Zero and I will both be able to say, do what I did, buy your next gaming machine from Viforce Gaming. That's right. It, and a reminder for, for those that are on the uh, audio portion, if you're interested in a Viforce computer, definitely go over to Viforce.com or you can go over to HeroPowerHS.com, click on the Viforce link, and it'll take you right to their page. I'd recommend going to Hero Power because if you try to go to Viforce.com, you're not going to get anywhere because it's ViforceGaming.com. <sighs> Hey, he, that's right. He, he's a rookie at it. Yeah, it's my first time. That's, that's my true. first time. That's true. It's his first time. <laughs> <laughs> we're all making mistakes tonight, right? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about because so far, those of you that are watching the show later, I'm perfect. All right. So this week we had no new emails and no new uh, iTunes reviews. Zoroshio so may have to eat his beard if you guys yeah, don't I'm send something hungry. in. But I do want to talk a little bit about our Patreon because, like I said a minute ago, we are doing our first Patreon patron giveaway this this month, and we're super stoked about it. So what do you have to do to get into the giveaway? Well, that's easy. You just have to be a $5 patron. Um, if you're not familiar with how Patreon works, you go to patreon.com slash hero power, pick your reward uh, tier, and... Then they, they charge you at the beginning of the month. You don't have to worry about being charged right away. You don't have to worry about, you know, no, wondering when they're going to charge you. They do it on the first of every month. So you always know when to expect it. It's super easy and it, it helps the show and allows us to give back to you guys a little more and do things like these giveaways and the Hero Power Invitational Tournament that's coming up later this month, which I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting super excited. And I also want to point out that, that we have great patrons patri patrons over at Patreon.com that have helped us out because we would not be able to do this without your help. 
because we had uh, bills come up. You know, we have to pay for the website. We have to pay for our services. And without Patreon and the support from you guys, we really wouldn't be able to keep this show going. And I really, I just want to thank you all again for allowing us to do this because we, we make this content for you and we just, we enjoy it. And, even, and one of the things, oh, go ahead, Versika. I was going to say, one of the things that, you know, I, I know other shows have, have enough patrons that they, you know, they, the patron allows them to uh, do this full time. Of course, we would like to get there, but for right now, our sole purpose for having a patron is so that we can put the necessary funds into this show to continue to improve it. And I mean, right now, 100% of the patron money that is being given to us is going directly back into the show, either in the form of, you know, hosting or paying taxes or, you know, um, Giveaways and licenses tournaments. for our software yeah. that we use, mm-hmm. and, and now is providing the prizes for the tournament. So, you know, this isn't something like you're giving us extra spending money or anything like that. We have our own streams for that. Which, by the way, if you haven't checked out our individual streams, when they're not up at the same time, they're actually all very entertaining. Um, Sorry, but all of them have donate buttons at the bottom. I don't so do. I don't stream yet. Obviously. Oh no! Now there's two of Auntie streams out there. One of them, in particular, is very funny. One of them you'll never see, Boyd. Just shh, shh. I know you um, were there. I know Zerosio was, was there. <laughs> no one is to talk about the stream that did not happen on New Year's Eve. Oh, it oh, happened. Watched, watched, <laughs> oh, it happened. I watched the vod. <laughs> um, but but yeah. So you know, if if you're if you're worried about where the patron money goes. Um, we could actually even give you a breakdown privately if you would like. But for for right now, I just want to assure everybody that anything that you give this show goes directly back into this show. We've done we we've set it up very specifically to only be for this show. So mm-hmm. just just kind of put that out there. I know there has been some shenanigans go on with patrons for other things, and I wanted you to feel comfortable. In, in donating to this show and comfortable in where that money is going. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. And guys, if you can't afford the $5 a month, you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and that gets you access to our private Facebook page and our private Discord server, where yeah. we are always in there talking Hearthstone and theory crafting, including tonight's deck was born and theory crafted in our patron discord server oh so one more thing can we go ahead and make the announcement about what we talked about um the last time that we were all together in the car i've slept since i thought then. we weren't ever going to talk about that <laughs> last time we were wait oh, so oh you're sho- talking about shower oh, beers totally different. what shower beers. <laughs> you, no not shower beers not yet oh, okay. working on that though. that will not what? be a patron goal that will not be a patron goal. Um, Won't be a goal at all. So, one of the things that we talked about was trying to give a little more content to our patrons. So, um, oh yeah, on our way back from our from our last uh, fireside, um, Zeroshio and I were batting some ideas back and forth, and uh, we're just like, you know what, we should turn this into a monthly podcast. It's sort of like a bonus episode for our patrons, and we're actually. Uh, we we kind of worked out some of the preliminaries. We're still working out the details, but it's basically going to be a Hero Power Lab, where we take mm-hmm. um, some kind of funky concept or something, and live on Twitch with chat room and everything, we're going to create decks from scratch. We're not going to use. It's, it's not any just going to be. It's going to be. We take a card or a couple, and we're going to make a deck around it. And yeah, we'll it's play not, it till it works. <laughs> and it's not always going to be just the deck crafting. When new sets come out, we're going to be theory crafting and uh, discussing new cards that are going to be coming out. We're going to be taking those new cards when they come out, when they're fresh, before anything's been decided on them, and you know, crack the code on them. We're we're really going to get you know deep dive on this. Uh, I'm excited for it. Uh, we still are working a lot of the details out. It probably will be a monthly show. And it will probably be one of our uh, upcoming patron goals. Right. Um, but we'll talk. We'll discuss more about that uh, after we're 
we were probably going to talk about this weekend. Uh, yeah. So we'll have some more in the next couple weeks. I just kind of want to drop that out because we were kind of talking about the patron stuff. I'm a planner. Yeah. I like to have everything laid out in front of me before we actually start doing stuff. So if it's up to me, it'll probably be a little bit before that happens. But it will definitely happen before the next expansion comes out <laughs> and probably before the uh, prelims in February. But I started working on the music for it this week. Uh, kind of excited about that. Uh, I've not been in the mixer in a while. So, um, you know, we, we actually have some from some music left over from where we commissioned our um, intro theme. So we also have that music. Uh, but this was something a little bit different that I just kind of wanted to try. So it's exciting. I, I got excited about it. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's part of that ongoing process that we, we want to continue to provide you guys with content that you enjoy, but that at the same time, helps improve your hearthstone game and helps improve ours in the process all right well that's awesome let's uh get into the doubts news um we don't have an awful lot to talk about but i do want to make sure we have enough time to talk about it because one of the things we wanted to talk about tonight was 2016 hearthstone year in review um 2016 saw the release of um whispers of the old gods Karazan, mm -hmm. and of course the main streets of Gadget Zan as the most oh, yeah. recent. So, Rasika, we're going to start with you. What are your thoughts on the sets and adventures that we got in 2016? I think Blizzard did an amazing job on the sets this year. Um, I think one of the things that I liked the most was the introduction of the standard format, because I feel like I feel like the power creep going into goblins versus gnomes was much more substantial than we originally thought. And I think the grand tournament was meant to kind of pare that down a little bit, and it didn't work. So to see goblins versus gnomes go over and really dictate the wild format and provide that way to play over in wild format, and then having a way that you can come into Hearthstone and everybody can come in and play and really only have to worry about that one pool of cards. Um, that's exciting. And I think we'll get to see that first real 100% impact on the meta when it rotates again um, this spring. And th that's exciting. But I feel like the sets, I feel like Whispers was a solid set. I feel like Mean Streets of Gadget Zan was a solid set. I feel like as far as... Um, an enjoyable adventure. I thought that that Karazhan was was really fun. I thought it was um, that nice mixture of being Hearthstone unique, but still kind of sticking with the meta that was dictated, or not dictated, but kind of fleshed out in World of Warcraft. So to be able to go through those bosses and kind of experience Karazhan in a different way was, was pretty cool. And if I Except had you called it. You predicted all you of Karazhan prior, you, you know, did. months in advance. Let's just throw that out there. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, that's my talent. That's that's what I'm good at. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, out of everything, I, I, feel, I feel like I feel like Karazhan was a great expand or a great um, adventure, and I really hope Blizzard pays attention to what they did well in Karazhan and. I don't want to say model their other adventures after it, but I want them to take the same care in creating them that they took in Karazhan. I feel like it was so much better than the other expansion or the other adventures in that it its story was uniquely Hearthstone, still had lore from the Warcraft universe, and still provided a great balance of cards. It, it kind of pulled the hat trick, and I would like to see the majority of their adventures pull the hat trick. Yeah. Uh, are you muted? Yeah, Zoroshio. You, <laughs> you were muted? Uh, yeah. I really, really enjoyed this year. Um, I I do think it's kind of apropos that the year, even though it was the tail end of 2015, but the first part of 2016 was kind of dominated and monopolized by Reno Jackson. And then the end of 2016 it was was uh, a Reno Jackson year. So I kind of like how Reno, it was the year of the Reno, not the Kraken. 
Um, I think the sets, Versica pretty much said it all. The sets were very solid, very competitive. They're getting a little bit, a little, they dabbled into the RNG and then realized, I think, a couple of their mistakes and they've really fleshed it out. I think 2016 set releases are going to make competitive Hearthstone just amazing for 2017. Um, I'm really excited for what we saw this year, and, and, and they can only do better. That's all. That's all I can think. If they just yeah. keep getting better than 2016, this game's gonna go on for a very long time. All right. So uh, Boyd just asked us a question in chat. Says, um, and, and I'm gonna phrase it a little different than how he did. I'm gonna say, what was your favorite card that released in 2016? So out of uh, whispers out of Karazhan, out of Mean Streets. What's been your single favorite card, Sorosio? Hmm. Making me pick out of all three sets. Um, I'm probably going to be very unpopular with this, but Medivh. Um, oh, wow. I really, really, really liked not so much the card specifically itself, but the fact that it it brought in a way for every class to get a weapon. And it, even though it's not a weapon you necessarily attack with, it has different different values. It changed the way you teched against certain decks. You might actually want to put in uh, an ooze to destroy a weapon against a mage. Uh, I did play a Reno mage that had Medivh in it, and I really enjoyed that deck a lot. It was probably one of the most fun decks I ever played. It... it had a decent win rate, but it wasn't competitive enough to stay in the meta. Uh, so yeah, that my card would probably be Medivh. Okay, Versika. Can I divide this into two, like <laughs> two parts? Does the card divide into two parts? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Go ahead. What do you got? So, so my favorite card is different from the card that I think is the best designed card. So Fair I'll enough. go with the best design card first. I think the best design card that came out this year is probably Dirty Rat, and I'll tell you why. Number one, in an aggro-dominated meta, it provides a low casting cost taunt that is neutral to all classes. And I felt like that was something that was really missed after um, the Death Lord um, left, when Nax left. Uh, the other part that I really like about it is the risk versus reward. You have to decide whether you want to play Dirty Rat when it's available to play because of the off chance you're going to pull something that you can't handle. But then there's the chance that you pull something that they really depend on, like a Reno, where you pull something with an, an, an equally powerful battle cry that now they don't get that option. Because, I mean, can, can you imagine pulling out a Twin Emperor or a Cthune? Yeah. I mean, it makes playing those cards, the longer they wait to play them, the more dangerous it becomes if you're playing if you're playing Dirty Rat. So I like the, the subtle... Um, I like the subtle complication that it adds to a matchup. So I think... The more cards we have, like Dirty Rat, the I feel like the better Hearthstone will be. So, my favorite card of the year is, uh, without a doubt, has been White Eyes. Mm. Uh, I like I like White Eyes because he's very difficult to deal with. You you have to deal with him. He's like an Emperor Thorison. You have to deal with him when he comes on the board. And when you deal with him, it puts just a bigger thread in your deck. And now you know that at some point you're going to get to put a 10-10 taunt into play for five. So I, I like, as a Shaman player, I like having a nice, powerful legendary that I don't have to wait till the end of the game to use. At five casting costs, he's that perfect midsection. I can cast my spectral wolves on turn three wait out my overload turn and then on turn five i have actually have a viable play mm -hmm. so 
All right. That he's my favorite card in the set. Okay. I want I want to chime in on Dirty Rat for a second. Um, I like I really like Dirty Rat, uh, and I didn't think about the card because I was trying not to think too much just Mean Streets, but obviously it's in there to slow the temp, change the tempo of your opponents, and set up some good you know clear combos. But I had an interesting situation where I was playing uh, Reno Lock, and I, of course, kept Doomsayer in my hand because there was a warrior, and they were likely going to be a pirate warrior. And I went ahead and decided to keep Reno Jackson. So I wait out turn one. They do the the the, the Zoth uh, first mate coin into small time Buccaneer, and they do the the, the perfect opener. So I go, well, I got you here, and I throw down at least a speed bump of Doomsayer. They followed it up with a dirty rat and got my Reno. Well, yeah, that, that hurts. So it's usable It's usable in aggro, it's usable in mid-range, it's, usable, it's really usable in control. But dirty rat is really changing how you play. Do you want to throw out the early... Doomsayer and hope they don't have Dirty Rat? Do you want to slow your pace a little bit or maybe even speed up your pace on for the possibility of using Dirty Rat? It's it's really a really neat card. I didn't think it, it was going to be as usable as it is. Mm -hmm. Well, my favorite card of 2016 was a card that defined an archetype that we saw a lot of and that was Nazoth the Corrupter. I've really had a lot of fun with Nazoth. Um, you know, the whole bringing back the um, uh, Death Rattles, you know, just that fact in general has, has led to more fun than I can, I can think of, in, you know, in the first half of this year. And, and it was just a lot. It, it was a great card. I thought it was well designed. Um, it, you know, you saw a lot of that and a lot of Yog saron until Yog saron got nerfed and dropped off the face of the earth. But Nazoth is still out there. You still see a lot of people yeah. running a mid-range Nazoth. You know, maybe not as many as you did in this current meta as you did in the past, but they're still out there. And you still have to account for, if I kill this Sylvanas, am I going to have to kill her again? And, and that's, mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite cards uh, this year, so. All right. You know, I actually played against a Nazoth rogue that was using the jades um, as uh, oh, they were using yeah, okay. the, the stealth jade death rattles and mm. the Aya black paws, and they were using the uh, mm. the raptors, and then after they all, after you managed to finally get all that away, they would Nazoth and bring it all back. And that's wow. the first time I've seen, it's the biggest golem I've seen, and it was a 16-16. Wow. It was, it was huge. Okay. Uh, the other question we wanted to touch on for about 2016 was esports in general and, you know, how Hearthstone tournaments have evolved this past year. Because I know the three of us have watched a lot of Hearthstone tournaments this year. So, um, Versika, I'm going to actually start with you on this question. What are your thoughts on how esport, esports and Hearthstone tournaments have evolved in 2016? Well, I think we're headed in the right action or the right uh, direction and I think this all starts with Blizzard's swift reaction to the sponsors pulling out after Yogg Saron became so dominant. Um, I think that they they responded with decisiveness, and I think they responded in a way that um, still kept a lot of the flair for the casual user, the casual player, but. Um, really limited his impact on tournament play. And I think that once that happened, and I, I think that once the the sponsors saw that, hey, Blizzard is serious about trying to make Hearthstone a legitimate eSport, then I, I, I think that was the first big step. But I think you're starting to see the development of uh, several different formats. You're starting to see 
other tournaments pop up beside just the Blizzard events. Um, there was a huge cash, cash prize tournament of $250,000. Uh, earlier in the year, you had Batstone, you had um, you know, the, the DreamHack. Um, the DreamHack this year in Austin was a great Hearthstone event. And you're going to get another one this coming year. Um, so I, I think Hearthstone is headed. Yeah, and then it, we're also going to be getting the uh, getting three Dream the Hacks Atlanta Dream Hack, which we will be um, will be attending in person. So that's super exciting for us too. But I, I think you're starting to see some of the players that really came to prominence uh, two years ago. You're starting to see them back in the limelight, and I think that is a good indication that the RNG, a lot of the RNG elements that were so frustrating to the pro players have started to be kind of corralled a little bit and being used in a way where they are strategic and less roll the dice. And I think that that bodes well for Hearthstone as an esport in 2017. All right. Yeah. Go ahead, Zerosia. And, and to touch on that a little bit, I think RNG is very important for the game. Uh, there, It did get a little crazy with Yogg-Saron, a few other effects, specifically in uh, Whispers of the Old Gods. But they've kind of rain back, rain backed a little bit with the new sets uh, from both Karazhan, the Adventure Karazhan, and the new set Mean Streets of Gadgetzan, where they're allowing aspects of randomness more in the form of Discover's and, you know, getting random versions of cards and pulling back from just a crazy, just throw your hands up, decide if you're going to win or lose. Uh, and I think that's very important. The one thing I've been really impressed with and excited with esports is the interaction with the community. The community has gone out and made tournaments happen. They've, they've uh, done Kickstarters and different uh, fundraisers for big tournaments. Um, they've done different formats. The strike format made by AK Wonder that was hosted by RDU. Uh, we've talked about that previously. The, the most recent one was Gang Wars did a skirmish format. That was really neat. And it, you're seeing, and you're also seeing the change from uh, Last Hero Standing tournaments to Conquests and the formats of different, different types of bands. You saw a couple tournaments where they actually Instead of bringing four decks, you bring six, and or you and bring nine. Some, yeah, or you bring nine. But there, I, I saw one small one that got a little bit of time on stream, but it wasn't. It was didn't re award points. But your opponent uh, banned a deck, and you banned a deck, and then you and your opponent both declared a class that you were not going to play with. Uh, so it kind of like well, you know that your matchup is going to be bad. For your warrior deck, so you tell them I'm not going to play my warrior, and then you go in with your next three decks. So it didn't really catch on, but just the fact that people are being uh, ingenuitive and inventive with these formats just makes you really excited for 2017. Uh, and I can't go past this without saying I've been excited, and I'm probably going to steal, steal Avanti's Thunder, but. Uh, I've been excited that we were able to host a couple prelims, both spring and summer prelims, uh, and we are hoping to host some some of those bigger events uh, in the future. Yes, yeah, we're we are uh, excited to get to work uh, with Blizzard and hope to help host these events and run the Hearthstone Championship Tour. So, yeah, that's just uh, an added bonus to the 2016 year and looking forward to 2017 so all right um so talking about esports um real, real quick before you go further i want to point out boyd in the chat room that hearthstone needs a razor ramon if i win <sighs> dream hack atlanta i will get a toothpick out and razor ramon in my interview i promise <laughs> all right talking about esports <laughs> Uh, Battle.net recently updated uh, their client, their webpage. If you go under the Hearthstone tab and then go under the Esports tab and click Schedule, they now list all of these cups 
and online events that you can compete in. Even some of the little ones like Strivewire events. But there are they basically have events listed, at least one event for the NA server and the Euro European server every day going out, you know, weeks in advance. So yeah. if, if you're looking for a, a tournament to play in, just an online event you can do from home, like a cup or something, where you can actually earn points, this is where you go to find it. You know, in the past, you'd have to go to like Reddit or to the Hearthstone calendar to try to find where to find these events. But now Blizzard has actually taken a step and started posting them directly to Battle.net. So, if you didn't know it's there, now you do, and you should go check it out. Yeah, we have the links in the show notes uh, for mm -hmm. those that are lis listening afterwards. Uh, just check us check out the show notes at HeroPowerHS.com. What's great about these is they're you just about do one a day, uh, and when you go when you click on the register here link, you get like a breakdown of how many points you could possibly get based on what place it is. Details on check-in, registration, it's extremely detailed. And most of the times are good times, usually around 7 o'clock Eastern time at night on a weekday and uh, midday on a, on a weekend. Uh, they're very well-timed, well-placed tournaments. Also, there are some days that have multiple tournaments from multiple different hosts, like Strive, Strive Wire and Gosu Gamers. There might be three or four in America at that time. If you are a little novice and you want to kind of get your get your feet in the water find the one that has the least amount of people registered and you get in that one because obviously those players aren't going to compete in the other one as well because they're the, at the exact same time yes yeah absolutely so all right well that brings us to this week's tavern brawl which if you guys are not familiar it is currently the 20th anniversary of the game Diablo from Blizzard Entertainment. Um, 20 years ago, three day, four days ago now, uh, Diablo was o unleashed to the world and to celebrate, Blizzard is running events across all their games that are Diablo themed. And for Hearthstone, that means we get Tavern Brawl The Dark Wanderer. So, a hooded stranger sits to play, holding a grim deck. Can you unravel the secrets surrounding this Dark Wanderer? Basically, it was a lot of fun. It's a yes. you, you against the AI. You do have to build a deck, and then you go in, and if you, if you defeat the Dark Wanderer, you get a special limited edition Diablo card back, which looks awesome. I might add. Mm -hmm. No, uh, you do not get a pack. This you do week. not get a pack this week, Espo. Sorry. Just wanted to get, give you a heads up now. So Yeah, this is definitely not a tavern brawl that Espo would like. Not only do you not get a pack, but you got to create a deck. and. But it does give casual players a chance at a really cool limited edition card back that they probably might not be able to get another way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's and that. What's really neat about this is they kind of tease some new possible Diablo theme style cards. Um, they they have some secrets, and and he always starts with three secrets, but they can change. I think there's up to ten different there's, types of secrets. There's ten different secrets. Yeah. I played uh, uh, ten games of this, and each one was different. Uh, and there is a way to get to a secret level. I have not been able to get it to happen for me yet. But I have seen some streamers that have been able to do it. Uh, and if you're familiar with Diablo, you know about the secret level. That's not the cow level. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that how Blizzard yeah, usually that's, that's how Blizzard says that? Usually says it. It's a secret level. It's, it's not, not the cow, cow level. level. Cow yeah. level does not exist. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. Now... It is wild format, but there are restrictions. There are certain type of cards you cannot put in the deck. And I'll, without teasing too much, I'll let you guys go in and figure that out. Uh, but it's a, I loved it. I had a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Versika, have you had a chance to do it yet? Yeah. Yeah, I, you can crush it with pretty much any aggro deck. Um, it's just... I, I don't know. It, the the ambiance is cool. 
the the Diablo theme is cool, but I thought that the actual tavern brawl itself was pretty uninspiring. Um, like I said, if you got an aggro deck, you pretty much just wreck it. If you yeah. play a slower deck, you better have some healing or something because once again, like most AI adventure style things, he breaks all the rules. It says he's a warlock, but he's rocking the fiery fiery wind axe and. He's got priest cards in there, like mind games and stuff like that. So if you're a, if you're just starting out or you're a casual player, um, it can be difficult for you because you may not have the the cards to compete against this AI uh, AI opponent. You better have some board clear, or you better be fast. You need one of those two things to win. Have you uh, yeah. have you done the secret level? No, like uh, Zeroshi, I, I played about ten times. I've not been able to get it to phase over yet. One of the it's it's kind of buggy too, because uh, I kept getting the secret to pop on Wind Fury. I would lay a Wind Fury minion, and it would say, you know, this this secret popped because you played a creature with spell power, and I was just mm. like, that's, yeah, that, uh, that's buggy. That's that's not really. So yeah, there were some bugs. I know my very first game, I only got one secret. I didn't get three. Hmm. I usually not, not that I didn't two. pop one. I I didn't get three at all. I just it was just one secret. Wow. So there were some there are some bugs with it, um, and if you just want to go in and win, it play aggro. It's really easy. I play Reno, lock and uh, Reno Warlock, and stalled the game out because I wanted to see everything was going to happen. And I actually spent most of my games going all the way to fatigue on both sides because I, I just wanted to see everything that was in the deck, find out what it could do. I enjoyed the the experimentation with it, but there were some bugs with it. I had minions die that shouldn't have died to certain AoE that had enough health. I had a few little glitches here and there. It, just, it was almost like there was hidden text on their cards that I couldn't read. Uh, and... He has these things that like chests and different rewards that'll pop from his minions, but you don't know which ones it's going to pop from and which ones it's not because there's no notations on on those minions. So it was really hard to keep track of what you if you were going to clear the board, you might not actually clear the board. Yeah, it was kind of funny because I, I pl- like I said I played ten games and I saw two of the death rattle that he pops, and then I watched one of our listeners play. Because I had the watch and learn quest, and uh, he actually got two, well, one, but two copies of one of the death rattles that I hadn't seen yet. Mm, okay, cool. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. Go check it out while it's available. Um, it's available now through uh, Monday, of course, as is usual, standard tavern brawl. But go go check it out. It's a lot of fun. All right. And, and as usual, Hero Power is one of the first <laughs> podcasts to report. On the uh, Tavern Brawl of the Week. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about this week's deck. As I said at the top of the show, this is a deck that was born and brewed and theory crafted in our patron Discord server. <laughs> and if it's just one of the advantages you guys have to being a patron is you get access to this Discord where we're all the time talking Hearthstone. But in this case... Secret Paladin version 2 was born. And so everybody's like, oh my god, Secret Paladin in this meta? Just go away, please. Yeah, really, a lot of people are just like, go away. But let me tell you, this deck is a lot of fun. It plays almost like a combination of Aggro Paladin and Secret Paladin. So it's you're pushing... Uh, you're, you're trying to buff, you're trying to push, and you're using your secrets as as a um, as a defense mechanism, really. And so it works really well. Some of you may have heard at the beginning of the show the stream that I did New Year's Eve. I played this deck. <laughs> I was completely inebriated at the time, and I went two out of three with it. The deck can almost autopilot itself. Oh, the misplays. <laughs> so many misplays. I only remember one, but like I said, I was inebriated. So anyway, let's re- give you the uh, rundown of the deck list, and then we'll talk about a little bit more about it, and then we'll go play it some after we do our patron giveaway. 
All right, so the deck list consists of two abusive sergeants, two argent squires, one competitive spirit, two dragon eggs, two noble sacrifice, two redemption, two Grime Street outfitter, two argent horse rider, two divine favor, two silent knight, two blessing of kings, two consecrations, two keeper of Uldeman, two true silver champions, one Leroy Jenkins, and two mysterious challengers. So, like I said, the deck really kind of plays like Aggro Paladin. You want to get out the Argent Squire, you want to get out a Dragon Egg, or you want a Grime Street Outfitter, turn one or turn two, to buff everything else in your hand. Then you want to drop your 2-2 two, two Argent Squire, your 1-3 Dragon Egg, your 3-3 three, three Silent Knot with Divine Shield and Stealth for three mana, Hey, I hear that's good. But there's there's all kinds of great possibilities and combinations with this deck. Um, you've got Consecration to help clear a lot of these pirates that are running around right now. Um, you know, you've got True Silver Champion that you can use to clear or go face. You, you know, you've got Leroy Jenkins as your finisher if you need to. There's just a lot of great options in this deck. And it's pretty quick. The, the most expensive card is the Mysterious Challenger at 6, but over half of the deck is 3 mana or less. So, with that said, Zerosho, did you get a chance to play it any? Yeah, I got uh, 10 games in with this, and I actually went 8-2. Uh, the funniest thing is, I never saw Mysterious Challenger once. <laughs> um I, if for those that remember back in March, I got, uh, I got Legend. And I rode Agro Paladin the whole way, the whole way through the month. This plays just like Agro Paladin. I was pleasantly surprised by Silent Knight. I did not expect the card to be that good. It really is like having two more Argent Horse Riders in your deck. Because it's a two-attack Divine Shield minion that is almost guaranteed to be able to attack. And it usually sticks around long enough to get a buff on him. Or you have him in your hand and you can get a buff on him. Having kind of a bulky cost for a 2-2 two -two is actually not bad with the buff cards, like the Grim Street Outfitter. Um, also, having a 7-9 Dragon Egg is always good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Versika, did you get any games in with it? I did. I played six games. I won all six. Of course, I made a couple of changes, but it was mostly because I didn't have Mysterious Challenger. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um I actually, what are the, it's the card that gives all the minions in your hand plus one. Grime Street Outfitter? Besides no, the, the Grime Street. Spell. Oh, um, spell. Yeah. Smuggler, Smuggler's Run. Smuggler Run? Smuggler's, Smuggler's Run, run yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then um, I also had the Kodo Secret mm. that I put in. Getaway Kodo? Uh, Getaway Kodo, and I put that in place of one of the Redemptions. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I cruised. I, like, no one even came close. Nice. Okay. So, there yeah, you've heard. I went two and three, totally inebriated. Zoroshio went eight and two. Versika went six and zero. Oh. The deck's a lot of fun, and it, it's quick. And we're we're gonna show you how it plays here in just a second. I think one of the biggest things about it is no one sees it coming. That's true. Nobody no. expects the Spanish. Inqu I mean, Secret Paladin. It's it's so <laughs> out of the meta that by the time they figure out what it what it's really trying to do. Oh, yeah. Did we lose you? You there? Oh, I think we might have lost Forsika. <laughs> I still hear Versica? you. Oh, okay. Okay. There you are. Are we there good? Yeah. 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 All right. Cut out for a second. Uh, I will say there is one addition here that I would love to make if I had the card, and I know Avanti's doesn't either, is Wicker Flame Burn Bristle. I actually got him for the first time in Arena. And built a very similar uh, paladin deck, mm -hmm. more aggro based, and that is an awesome card. Wh Wicker Flame, flame yeah, Wh Wicker Flame is a card that we theory crafted again with this deck that would work really mm -hmm. well. So if and, and you could so, probably put him in place of a Silent Knight. Yeah, and if you're looking for if you've got him and he's just a dead card in your collection, this is a great fit for him. Go ahead, Versika. I was going to say I would take out a, another redemption to put him in. Silent Knight is just so good. 
and it's so uh, it's so key in maintaining board control. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Um, well, normally this is where we would jump to last thoughts, but we're going to do that in a minute. First of all, guys, it's time. First uh -oh. time. First hero power patron giveaway of 2017. So, what do you have to do to be eligible for the giveaway? You have to be a five dollar patron or more at the beginning of the month. On uh, the beginning of the month, we're doing the giveaway. So, the first day when patron does their charges, you have to be a patron at that point in time to be eligible. Um, if you so in this so, case, January yeah, first. So right. So January first, if you were a five dollar or more patron, you become eligible. Now, if you're a ten dollar patron, you get two entries. If you're a $20 patron, you get four entries. If you're a $15 patron, you get three. Blah, 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 blah. So For every $5 in patron you are, you, for every $5 increment, you get one entry. You get one additional entry into the giveaway. We're going to do this every month, the first show of every month. So mm -hmm. if you're thinking about joining us, please come do. We have a lot of fun. We talk a lot of Hearthstone. All right. With that said... I have preloaded everyone that was a patron. So if you know based on their their level. Uh that's the wrong one. <laughs> I'll do it over here. So I have all of our patrons preloaded. And drum roll, the winner for the January giveaway is Travis Jones, congratulations right. to Bassoon Buffoon in our patron group. You have won the January giveaway. So that's congratulations. as tell, tell easy them what as we're it giving is. Them. Yeah, so the, uh, the winner of this month's giveaway gets the Hearthstone Pillow. And just because it's bassoon buffoon, we're all gonna rub our faces all over it for him. Oh, no, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, oh, I got wait, him. Just kidding. Driver. What? Oh, him. my bad. I didn't do that. <laughs> no. Uh, next month, we're giving away a twenty dollars Battle.net gift card. So for as little as five dollars, you could win twenty dollars. It's that easy. So, all right, guys. Let's do last thoughts for today's show. Zeroshio, you go first. Uh, 2017's here. Uh, go ahead and make your Hearthstone goals, whether it be you know push for rank 15 or push for legend or get a golden hero or even just get a, a character up to a certain level, like level 60. Um, that's the fun about this game is you can you have so many fun ways to play it. It's not just about wins or losses. Uh, you can go for collections, you can go for different accolades, card backs, um, golden cards. Just go out there and have fun. That's all I got to say about that. All right. Rasika? Same thing. Just, and, and I was trying to get a uh, blog post um, written before the show tonight. I've been working on it for almost a week now, and... Uh, got a lot to say and trying to make sure that you guys don't have to read like a war and peace rendition um but basically this game like almost everything else in life is what you make of it so one of my hopes is that you know if, you, if you're if you're playing hearthstone and you're getting frustrated take a deep breath relax enjoy the game for what it is and just keep a positive attitude towards your goal. Set that goal. Write it down on paper if you have to. And just each each day, each month, just tick away at that goal. Celebrate your, your small successes until you get to your large success. And then once you get there, you know, set a set a different goal. And you know, for for some people it may be playing consistently for others it may be reaching rank 10 for others it may be reaching rank 5 for some it may be legend whatever that goal take it a step at a time don't get frustrated and have fun because once you get there it's over that particular journey towards that goal is over so enjoy that process enjoy that journey and I think you'll find that your Hearthstone experience is going to be a whole lot more enjoyable for it 
All right. Well said, sir. Well said. So, if you are joining us on Twitch or YouTube, please stay tuned for the live play portion of our show. If you are listening via the audio podcast, we'd like to thank you for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter at HeroPower underscore cast. You can find all of our past episodes on YouTube at youtube.com slash ecmmogamers or on our website at heropowerhs.com. If you enjoy the show, you'd like to help to support and improve it, you can do so by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash heropower. And as always, we'll see you again next week. And don't forget to use your hero power. See you in two weeks. All righty. With that and said. And I didn't interrupt you. You didn't. I was, I'm impressed. I'm, it was hard. It was difficult. Yeah. So uh, while I'm getting set up on this side, why don't you tell us a little more about your experience with Viforce? So like I said earlier, um, my my wife and I agreed that I can get a Viforce computer for DreamHack. If you don't know a lot about DreamHack, you can get something called a bring your own computer ticket, BYOC. You bring your computer to supply you a table, a power, network connection. You have to bring your own cable and a chair. And I really wanted a good, solid computer, and I'd love to uh, advertise Viforce while we're there. So we're going to go ahead and, and, and get a Viforce computer, but the agreement is that we also get her one with our tax refund money. So because tax season is coming up so soon, I knew I had to contact uh, Viforce, and one of the great member, members of Viforce Gaming uh, is, is Josh. And I contacted him and said I'm really interested in uh, getting a quote and doing a build out for a computer, and just let me know when you when you can get back to me. Of course, I've got time, but I wanted to do it now because you know, give him a couple weeks to contact me. He contacts me almost immediately, and we actually switch over to communicate on BattleNet because he was currently in World of Warcraft. And so he took his time while he was gaming in World of Warcraft to walk me through all the options. And it only took a few minutes. And he said, I'll work something up and send it to you. So, again, we're done. No big deal. I'll probably hear something the next week. No. The next morning I have a message with a link that had the full breakdown of options for her computer. And now I'm on to the next step of working out, out all the details with her and working on getting an actual price quote with them. The process is super simple. The guys over there are really easy to work with. I know Versika has said it before, uh, but my personal experience, and I am a tech guy. I usually like to build my own computers or I like to actually get each part picked out myself. I was actually hesitant to go through Viforce, but this, this, process is the best i've ever dealt with and if you haven't if you haven't uh had a chance to build your own custom pc and want to definitely go to viforcegaming.com or if you go to heropowerhs.com and click on the viforce link take you right to their right to their uh site click on products and you look at all their computer options they're also a great price it's that easy that easy all right so you guys ready to rock this? Like a hurricane. All right. No one like will hurricane. see it coming. <laughs> uh, that was a good one. <laughs> Love that song. <laughs> I know. I was just sitting here like, I don't want to run off all of our listeners, but I may break out into song here in a minute. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Don't Actually. Do that. I have a few iTunes credits I still need to spend. <laughs> All right. So this deck we're looking for usually um, Dragon Egg or Grime Street Outfitter. Um, Silent Knight's not bad, um, but there's there's other options. Our opening mulligan here is Noble Sacrifice, True Silver Champion, Silent Knight. What do you guys think? Sorosio? I, I say Noble Sacrifice, and since we're playing against Shaman, Silent Night is not bad. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking the only thing you pitch back is the champion. Okay. Champion. And I, I'm hesitant on the choice over just because of Totem Golem, but since we don't have coin, it's kind of a late card. So, yeah, I'd pitch the two silver. All right, he pitched, looks like all of his, and we got the Ground Street Outfitter. Exactly what we wanted. So do we want to turn one Noble Sack, or do we want to hold on to it? The problem with Shaman is they could turn one, um, uh, what is the 1-3 weapon? Oh, um, oh, Spirit Claws? Spectral, Spirit, yeah, Spirit Claws, Claws, yeah. They could turn one Spirit Claws and pop the Noble Sacrifice, and we'd get no protection to our minions from it. Okay, so just hold on to it and pass? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. The problem is if we Grime Street, there's no protection from it there either, but it's a 1-1. One, one. Right. Okay. And we top deck the Dragon Egg to go with... Do, do we want a Grime Street now, or do we want to wait one more turn? I think I would Grime Street now. Yeah, we want to put get the buff on that Dragon Egg. That's really that's really going to be good. We okay. also want to start applying pressure. Right. I mean, uh -huh. a 1-1's one, not much, but I mean, the if we let him get going it's going to be really probably dirty rat this that's great yeah that's very good all right mm. well he's dirty ratting there's a good chance he's probably got lightning storm or elemental destruction in his hand if you play silent knot you might not be able to load the board back up i think with this turn I think I would probably Noble Sacrifice and Hero Power. Yeah, I agree. The problem is, is if, if he does have Lightning Storm, it's he has an awkward Lightning Storm with the Dragon Egg, and if he decides to try to run in and, and chip off the Dragon Egg, uh, the Noble Sacrifice will protect it. And I say we just pass. Is there any merit to, to popping with the egg? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Keeping it in a 1-3 is probably better than making it a 1-1. Yeah. Because next turn we can True Silver Champion and clear the... Yep. Because the Noble Sacrifice will do two damage to it, which is Correct. important. Okay. All right, so now I think this is a no-brainer. You True Silver so you can power down the Dirty Rat and then run all three of those into the Mana Tide Totem. Yep. We want, we don't want him drawing anymore. Uh, if we happen to have a uh, Divine Favor in our hand, that might change it. We might let him draw a turn or two, but we don't have it yet. I think this is probably a mid-range Shaman. From the looks of it, yeah. And there's Wadas. Could be a Control Shaman. I've seen those in the meta. Oh, no, the Grim Street's not so, bad. So, what do you think about Grim Street, Silent Knot, hit face, clear with the 1-1, one, one, and then go face with the 1-3 and the 1-1? One, one? Sounds about right. I think I would Grom Street, Argent Squire, Dude. Hero Power. Yeah. Clear with the, clear with the um, Champion and the... Uh, the egg, the uh, silver hand recruit, yeah, and go to face with the Grom Street and the egg. Okay, and make sure you, make sure to use your hero power. Don't forget to use your hero power. That's right. And see, the divine shields and the dragon egg make clears awkward for him. You might see an elemental destruction. In this deck, uh, if it's what I think it is, they mm -hmm. run one of. There's Holozeal. Oh wow, Holozeal on it and nothing. So he definitely has to be cleared. I would say abusive sergeant on the Argent Squire. Uh, I like leaving the Divine Shield on the Argent Squire. What do you think about? Uh, you're abusive gonna... Sergeant on on a 1-1 one, one, and then you sack all your 1-1s one, and the buffed up 1-1. One, one. That way we play around uh, an easy like Maelstrom Portal clear. 
I mean, I, I guess we just we're giving all the we're giving him all the momentum. Yeah, I can I can see that too. Okay, let's just put it on the two two. The I just worry about a low clear without having any with divine shield. I do think we need to put out Silent Night though. And then hero power. What do you think of that? That's fine. I, th I think he's going to try and clear anyway. Yeah, but we we need something that's protected. Yeah. So and the to make it awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's leaving a two two on the board or leaving a four four on the board, yep. as well as the dragon, the well playing. That's that's fine. Because because right now he can't clear without leaving a four four and a two one. He just keeps putting large threats down. Divine favor. Um. Yeah. I think. Yeah. We're gonna get Divine five favor. cards. Yeah. There's a mysterious challenger. So we could mysterious challenger and abusive sergeant. We can't mysterious challenger now. Or not mysterious challenger. Uh, I mean, urgent horse rider or and abusive sergeant. Yeah. I, I think can't, there's something to be said for keeping back the horse rider. Okay. Yeah. We can't do that anyways because we have six minions on the board. We'd have to pop a minion into it. Well, I was going to say we should probably abusive sergeant on the squire again. Uh-huh. And use I it like with that. the other abusive sergeant to clear Thorson. That's a good idea. Do we go ahead and put out both of our secrets? I think I would... Well, no, because, well, yeah, because Mysterious Challenger is pretty worthless for his secret yeah. draw now. So, yeah, go ahead and put out Buzz Secrets. We're not in a terrible spot. And his big life, what? Another one? It's not what he wanted to see. No. I think this is probably an elemental destruction turn or a lightning storm turn. Sylvanas? That's a little awkward. Hmm. So what do you what think? What do you think, Sika? I'm thinking Silent Knot into the 2-6, probably Argent Horse Rider, and then go everything else to face and summon another 1-1 one, one to... Uh, what, what do you think What do you think about Silent Knot into Dirty Rat? Consecrate. Finish Anything off... Anything face? Finish off... Yeah. Finish off by going face with everything else. Okay. And then just hero power? That's what I'm thinking. Give him another chance power. to pick up another 1-1. One, one. Yeah, way, anything he takes is not of high value. Right. That way, if he takes the Silent Knight, it's an unshielded he, he can't. He can't take the Silent Knight because he would have to run into a 4-4 four, four to, to he, kill. He can't do that because he's going to run into a 2-1. That's true. Well, no, he won't because our board's full. Oh, yeah. well, that's true. But that's he could, fine. He could lightning storm. Yeah, lightning then storm. He just leaves the silent night. So yeah, he could lightning do a storm still clear with a lightning storm. He could, but he can't clear. Uh, that's what he's going to do. He can't use Sylvanas. Nothing will kill off Sylvanas except for the silent night. They probably went over there. This may make his his trade awkward. Oh, see, now it will hit a 2-1. Mm -hmm. It's a chance to pull the 2-1. No, it's it, it's going to Noble Sacrifice if he runs in Sylvanas. That's true. So it will oh, not yeah. kill off Sylvanas. That's right. So we have four, five, six, seven. So we going need a Blessing place. of Kings. Blessing of Kings. We need a Silver Hammer. Oh, never mind. Nope. Oh, there's no, 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 no. a healing wave. <laughs> Ah, yes. Oh, but he didn't the, get it. Our highest, well, other than Mysterious Challenger. 
That's a lot of overload this turn. Sure is. You know, I don't think we play the dragon egg. Okay. I don't think so either. I think we take everything to face, play redemption, make a dude, and pass. Because he's going to trade in yeah. to take something. At least he's going to take something low value. And we and my, can Mysterious Challenger next turn. My bet is he hits the Grom Street with Thanos. I, oh. That's a misplay. Yep. He should have cleared the 1-1 one, one or the 2-1 first to raise his chance of getting the 4-1. But now he can run the 2-1 into the 4-1. Yeah, he can run both of his minions into our, two of our minions. He was wanting to clear our board this way. Yep. But didn't count on redemption. Do, what secrets do we even have? We don't have any more. No, we have competitive spirit. We have competitive spirit. We have spirit. competitive yep. spirit. Which we want to get, have the dragon egg out before competitive spirit goes off. Yes. So we want to dump our whole hand? Dump our whole dump our, hand. Yep, dump our hand. Go face. Yep. He's burned a lot of his heel. I mean, he probably runs uh, fish dudes, water speakers. Genius. Genius water speakers. Um, he's down one healing wave, which usually they run one of, and he's down his Halazeal, which is his big healer. Oh, Devolve. Devolve. Uh, That's interesting. Really, that doesn't really low lower our value that much. The 1-1 one, one turn into a 1-1. One, one, a 2-2 two, a two, two turn There's into a 2 There's the second healing three. wave. And we won that one too. Boy, Leroy is pulling his weight tonight. <laughs> Hexing six, the 3-6. Yeah. But the competitive spirit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's actually really good. <laughs> Divine, oh, divine favor, favor. favor. Draw three cards. Best paladin card ever. There we go. Uh, so wait, oh, is that that could, is that Quick, game? math it up. Two, four, six, eight. No, that's just twelve with the blessing. Twelve, sixteen with no twelve, fourteen with uh, Argent Horse Rider. But I say we Horse Rider blessing and kings it, and just go face. I agree, because he he has to clear the one two taunt before he can do anything yep. else. Or he but, maelstrom portals. Or he maelstrom portals, yeah. Well, he doesn't have spell power, so... He could. I mean, he could. Yeah. Should, should he, I clear the totem clear... to increase his I chance? Uh, I think I think so. You do? Wisp yeah, the totem. well, hold on. Wisp Go to face totem. Your... Yeah, wisp the totem, because we still have lethal on the board. Yeah. If, if, we would not, if we would be sacrificing lethal next turn for it, I'd say no. But we're not sacrificing lethal. And that lowers his chance of getting spell power totem. So he pretty much has to have Blood Mage or He's Azure already Drake. played Blood Mage. There's then Azure, Azure Drake. Drake. Oh, what'd he get? He got another Devolve. That's probably not going to do it for him. Oh, because zero casting costs can't go any lower, so they stay zero. Yep. They stay whatever they were. Taunt totem or lose. Lava shot. Oh, one short oh. of lethal. One short. Come on, give us damage. Ah! <laughs> Top deck for the win. You know As what? We We're going to kill him do. with the tiny murloc. That's right. <laughs> you just got tiny fin, boss. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Go make some hot pockets. <laughs> <laughs> what a top deck. That was a good one. Yeah. All right. That's game Let's do it one. Again. Let's do it again. This deck's a lot of fun. It really is. It is a lot of it is a lot of fun. <laughs> it is a ton of fun. Yeah. Yeah, between the three of us, we make a fairly decent Hearthstone player. <laughs> <laughs> so so me and Dushara have been doing co op arena runs, and between the two of us that comment was made. Between two of us we make a pretty decent Hearthstone player. 
All right, so this is probably Reno Log, if I had way. to guess. I'd dump it all. Yeah, I, I agree. I would also yep. dump it all. Dump it all. Ugh. Not much better. Eh. Grime Street. No. All right, I'm going to pass turn one. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got time. Yeah. Actually, you know. I don't know. They're... Zulok's kind of made a little bit of a comeback. I've seen some Zulok lately. No, but this that is... is Reno, for yeah. sure. <laughs> this dude up. Yeah. Now, Keeper of Oldman onto a Dragon Egg is pretty strong. And a lot of times you put Dragon Egg out and they'll leave it alone because they don't want to hit it. Then you Oldman it the next turn. Totally catches them off guard. Mm -hmm. There's our outfitter. There's your out I would outfitter and Dragon Egg. Because this puts two minions on the board that threaten the 2-1. And he might actually have to sacrifice he's, the Shadow he's Bolt. He's hovering over that egg, trying to see what it is. He might have to Shadow Bolt that uh, that egg, because uh, if he could, not... He could run the Mistress and then Dragon, or Demon Rat. But, but then he, that's two whelps. Yeah. Well, that'd be one whelp. And then he can Mortal but, Coil the whelp next mortal turn. Mortal Coil it, yeah. Yeah. But still, that's a lot of resources for a one mana yep. minion. He doesn't and want to do that. Next turn, we're going to keep her Voldem in one of these two, whichever one lives. I think he was digging for a mortal coil, or he would have already done it. Usually yeah. you would mortal coil before you tap. Yeah. At least that's what Fred at Hearth Coach tells me. Yep. <laughs> oh, no. Do we, is that too risky? Is that too, like, yellow? I think so. I don't, you, you I don't, don't think so. You don't think Blessing the Kings on no. this? I think it, is. I think I, it I, draws I, out hard removal. It okay. does, but it's hard removal that will not give us a whelp. I think, I, I want to do that, but I think we keep her it to a 3-3. Three, three. That way we have two minions on the board. And that, then if he doesn't kill it next turn, then we blessing it? No. If you don't blessing it this turn, you don't bless in that. It no, you will end up blessing the uh, Argent Horse Rider at that what, point. What? what here, here's what you got to think about. We have to kill him before turn six. That's true. We're already on if turn put, three. Right. If you put Blessing of Kings on there, we get him way down and force his turn six to play to be Reno, which means he can't siphon soul it. I, I say do it, but I almost guarantee you it gets Blast Fire Crystal. <laughs> or Blast Crystal Potion. That would be okay, too, because that loses him a mana crystal. Yeah, I guess you're right. But really, that's his only way to deal with it, is a Blast Crystal Potion. Oh, it's not a Blast Crystal Potion. Or it would put an arrow on it. <laughs> exactly, that's what I'm... And Nibble Swap in chat is saying exactly what I was trying to say. There is no hard removal for this particular Warlock on turn four. Well... Doomsayer. That's, that's good, because we can clear it. Yeah, that's going to become he, a 3-3. Three, three. He's saying right now that that he basically is going... It's seven points of healing. Yeah, before so you we, play Argent, play the Grime Street. Yeah, Grime Street yeah. yeah. That's a better play. And oh then gosh, run both of them in. 8-4 Rado. I mean, uh, Leroy. <laughs> it's sick. We could actually three three the the Grime Street, even though it still succumbs to right. uh, a fire. He's in an awkward spot. Yeah. So now he has too much to ha that he has to remove. There's the bruiser. That's fine. So, what do you think about? Keepering the bruiser and killing it with the argent and then hitting him for six. I think the shield's too important. Uh, well, we could keep her the bruiser and then we at this our, point use the sergeant point, to one one. I was gonna say at this point we could keep her the yeah we could do that or we could yeah. do it the other way. Yeah, you either you way. Keep, yeah, keep her keep her the Grom Street and then hit him with abusive sergeant too. Yeah, yeah. either way. 
six of one, half a dozen of the other. It's the same, same, same way, two different ways to do it. Yeah, exactly. I like it. I like it. And that keeps the egg out of Hellfire range or uh, Enforcer range next turn. So he's at 16. We've got 10. We've got 15, 16 on the board That's plus Leroy. So he has he, he has to Reno now or or play some. He Reno's time. now or dies. If he softens souls one of them, we still win. Mm -hmm. And even if he Reno's, he, he's still going to be lower than his health is now next turn. Yeah. I don't. If he Leroy, if he Reno's, I don't think we Leroy. We want Leroy for lethal. I think we would divine favor. I agree. If he Reno's, we definitely divine favor. Yeah. And what we'd be looking for? Oh, be that's a far seer. Game. That's not going to help him. He's counting that he he's just getting out of range. Hoping we don't have anything else. Five, nine, fourteen. Mortal coil. What? That didn't what? make any sense. Uh, no, he doesn't draw a card. I think he's thinking set up for next turn. Yep. Yeah. We got him. Isn't that lethal? Thirteen. Yes. Yeah, that's lethal. With Leroy is lethal. My favorite emote in the game, or the voiceover in the game, Leroy Jenkins. All right, two so oh, fun. just like that. What did that take? Five minutes. <laughs> yeah, we're actually ending the show early. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That doesn't happen very often. Nope. That's all right though. All right. Uh. So yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. I love this deck, guys. It's. Nobody expects it because nobody expects to see Secret Paladin. We totally should have uh, called that Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> the Spanish Inquisition deck. <laughs> Though I will say this, I don't think this is a this is a true uh, Secret Paladin. I guess it has a lot of secrets. I honestly could see taking the Mysterious Challengers out of this deck and it being just as good. Okay. Uh, but well, I think I said, the secrets I, are important. I went six and zero with it, and I didn't have Mysterious Challenger. Yeah. All right. I like this deck a lot. And I have to say, it doesn't feel near as dirty as Agro Shaman. <laughs> <laughs> it's still dirty. Don't, Don't get me wrong. Feel, it's still dirty. I feel, I feel pretty it, dirty. <laughs> it's not as dirty as Agro Shaman. Yeah. Oh, that's right, Crovin Blaze. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. That's right. So, all right. So, let's talk. Uh, last thoughts about this deck. Um, Zoroshio, we'll start with you. It's fun. Uh, I love Paladin. Uh, I got my bread and butter off Paladin early on. It was my first golden class. This is right up my alley. I I tend to play control style decks. It's just it was brought to my attention the last fireside I was at that. It kind of predicted my plays because of my control nature. However, this is my one exception. I love Agro Paladin, and this is just it's just a fun deck to play. Okay. Versica. Dirty. You feel <laughs> dirty when you play it, but out of the three aggro decks that are actually four, because I, I I still see a lot of disco aggro. Um, out of those decks, it feels the least dirty. So if you're not a dirty aggro player and you want one that's a little bit different, I think this is a good option. Plus, right now, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, plus right now, there's not a lot of Paladin out there. And I think people are kind of forgetting how to play against Paladin, in a sense. Yeah. Forgetting they exist. Mm -hmm. Well, not forgetting they exist, but forgetting that you have to watch out for the turn for uh, True Silver Champion. Forgetting that, you know, Divine Favor, uh, Blessing of Kings combo on turn five can, can wipe you out. Um, you know, so I, I, think, I think there's something to be said for the, uh, the surprise factor that this deck has going for it. So if you're looking for a way to clear your paladin quest or uh, if you're just getting started and you've not cleared out your grimy goons quests um, this is a, a good way to 
to do that. Yep. And I, I got to give credit where credit is due. As I said, this deck was completely created and theory crafted in our patron discord by Mad at Arms, who is uh, one of our regular listeners. And so I have to give credit where credit's due. I was struggling to clear um, some Paladin quests, like you said, and he sent me this deck list and said, give this a shot. And then we kind of talked about it back and forth for the next couple of days, uh, taking out cards, adding in cards until we settled on this deck list. And uh, it's it's worked really well. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for something fast, fun, give it a shot. It You can't you really can't go wrong with it. And if you're a patron or interested in becoming a patron and being part of our Discord, uh, Matt at Arms is very creative and puts up a lot of deck ideas. He's kind of like the Matt scientist. Get it? Oh. Uh, anyway, he, he's, he's so really, lucky he's really, at the beach. <laughs> he's really, really creative. And honestly, our our whole community, all of our patrons, uh, Nibble Swap, uh, Ducharmo, uh, just all of our patrons – contribute to our uh, discord community so it's definitely worth at least a one dollar a month to be part of uh so that we can uh just spread out that community and share the wealth of of hearthstone knowledge that our patron uh patron group has yeah yeah so all right guys well that's gonna do it for us this week if you have any questions or comments about the show please email us at hero power podcast at gmail.com uh, if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button below on YouTube or give us a follow on Twitch to be alerted when we go live. And uh, as Zeroshio was saying, if you want more details on how to become a patron, check out patreon.com slash hero power. And until next week, good gaming. Have fun, guys. <laughs>